Okay, I, I will start my presentation. I'm Takanori Miyagish from Fujitsu, and he is Chan Yu from Huawei. This is the, uh, uh, the agenda for my presentation. It has five parts, vision, issues, solution, effort in liberty, and future plan. In effort in liberty part, uh, we will explain our activities of Fujitsu and Huawei. At first, I will explain our vision for OpenStack networking to deploy enterprise system uh, onto OpenStack. We need more uh, scalability and availability. Needless to say, scalability is necessary for deploying uh, more VMs, like uh, thousands of VMs. And availability is necessary to reduce downtime. I think Neutron has the two issues today, performance bottleneck and single point of failure. The conventional OpenStack networking configuration is like this. <coughs> Let's call it ne uh, legacy network. Architecture or, le uh, so, sorry, legacy network architecture or legacy router. Uh, Neutron centralized uh, networking service onto network node. Because of this, uh, many network traffic needs to go through uh, network node. Uh, what happens due to the architecture? The first issue is network node can be a, a performance bottleneck. There are six network traffic. Two big categories, east-west traffic and uh, north-south traffic. East-west traffic uh, includes four traffic. Uh, traffic between VMs in the, uh, in the same subnet and different subnets. Traffic of VM accessing to DH server, DHCP server and traffic of uh, VM getting metadata from uh, virtual router. Let's take a look at the first traffic, which is traffic between VMs in the same subnet. As the red arrow, uh, arrow in this figure shows, uh, VMs can communicate without going through network node. Even if VMs reside on different compute node, VMs can communicate without going through network node. The second traffic is a traffic between VMs in different subnets. In this case, the traffic needs to go through network node to know the route to the destination host. Even if VMs uh, decide on same compute node, VMs need to go through network node to communicate as long as VMs are on different subnets. The third traffic is a traffic of VM accessing to DHCP server to get an IP address uh, when VM is booting. DHCP server is running on network node, so the traffic needs to go through network node. The fourth traffic is a traffic of VM, VM getting metadata from uh, virtual router when VM is booting. The remaining two traffic are traffic to the, uh, to the outside of OpenStack. OpenStack has two ways to go to the outside of OpenStack. One is with floating IP that associated to a VM. The other is with SNAT. These traffic need to go through network node. Summarizing the, uh, the six traffic here. Five out of six traffic need to go through network node. Therefore, network node can be a performance bottleneck. The second issue is network node is a single point of failure. If network node fails, that affects many traffic. 
at Juno release, distributed virtual router or, the, uh, or DBR was implemented to solve these two issues. With DBR, L3, uh, L3 agent and metadata agent can be distributed on each compute node. However, a part of L3 agent, which is SNAT, and DHCP agent remains on network node. Well, uh, I will explain the benefits of DVR in detail by comparing with legacy router. At first, let's take a look uh, at the traffic with legacy router again. Five out of six traffic need to go through network node. What changes with DVR? With DVR, virtual router and floating IP are distributed on each compute node. In addition, each compute node has an interface to external network. From the, uh, from the next slide, let's take a look at the changes of six traffic. The traffic of VM's communication in <coughs> in the same subnet has no change from legacy router. The traffic of VM's communication in different subnets now is able to get that root information from the virtual router distributed on compute node. Therefore, this traffic no longer needs to go through network node. About VM accessing to DHCP server, this traffic still needs to go through network node. About VM getting metadata from virtual router, it now can get it from the virtual router distributed on compute node. Therefore, the traffic no longer needs to go through network node. The traffic of floating IP also no longer needs to go through network node. However, the traffic of SNAT still needs to go through network node. Summarizing these behaviors, three traffic no longer needs to, do, to go through <coughs> network node, thanks to DVR. But two traffic are still needs to go through network node, meaning there are still two issues, bottleneck and single point of failures. Therefore, to eliminate bottleneck and single point of failure, distributed SNAT and DSCP are required. To realize this feature, Fujitsu is working to realize the distributed SNAT, and Huawei is working to realize the distributed DSCP. We will explain our efforts in Liberty, development cycle for from next page. Needless to say, uh, the distributed SNAT is the feature that distributes L3 agents so that we can eliminate traffic to network node. At first, I will explain the behavior of SNAT in current DVR model. Neutron creates a uh, SNAT on network node for each virtual router which is created on compute node. So if a tenant has multiple virtual routers, routers, Neutron creates the same number of SNATs on network node. The amount of public IP consumption is the number of virtual router. Three public IPs are needed in this example, example system configuration. I have devised high, uh, I have devised five ideas for distributed SNAT using some, some hints in the past discussion in the community. Of course, each idea has pros and cons. And one thing I find, found out was the reason of why distributed SNAT has not been implemented yet. It's because it's not easy at all 
to devise the best idea. I explain the amount of public IP consumption by showing, the, showing an actual number of consumption in uh, an ex example system configuration. There are two compute nodes, uh, number one and number two. Compute node number one and number two have two VMs of tenant number one and VM of tenant number two. The first idea is one SNAT for one router. This idea is the simplest implementation that basically follows the current DVR behavior. But the number of SNAT increase because each, uh, each virtual router requires one SNAT. Therefore, the, uh, the amount of uh, public IP consumption will be number of virtual router times uh, number of compute nodes. In case of the, of the uh, example system configuration, three routers are distributed on two compute nodes. So the amount of IP consumption is six. This idea might be accepted for small size environment, but if the environment becomes bigger and increase the number of routers and compute nodes, the IP consumption will become too many. The next idea is one is not for one compute node. This idea consumes one IP per each compute node aiming to reduce IP consumption. In other words, SNAT will be shared by different tenants on the, uh, on the, on the host. Therefore, ne we need an exclusion of address scope between tenants. The amount of public IP consumption will be number of compute nodes. It should be uh, sufficiently small. In this example system configuration, two IP are consum consumed. However, this idea has an issue. That is a security concern due to sharing SNAT by different tenants. Then, the third idea, one SNAT for one compute node without security con concern, is to <coughs> solve this security concern still trying to reduce IP consumption. With this idea, uh, SNAT will be shared by a uh, virtual router of the, uh, of the same tenant in compute node. The amount of public IP consumption will be number of compute nodes uh, times number of tenants. However, if each, each tenant only has one virtual router, the consumption will be the uh, same as idea number one. In, in the example system configuration, four IPs are consumed. These three ideas actually uh, increases the IP consumption if you compare to the, uh, to the current SNAT model. The remaining two ideas are to reduce the IP consumption. Then fourth idea is double NAT. We have uh, SNAT and an upstream physical uh, router. SNAT is to uh, translate private IP to a dedicated uh, local IP, like I, uh, ISP shared IP address. Upstream uh, physical router is to translate the local IP to a public IP. This requires some changes to floating IP mechanism as it only handles public IPs. In addition, upstream physical data needs to be dynamically set up. But Neutron doesn't have such a feature. Therefore, to realize this idea, we need to develop the feature. The amount of public IP consumption will be number of virtual router. It's same amount of uh, current DVR model. 
The last idea is BGP-based idea. With this idea, uh, virtual data in the same group share one public IP. We need an upstream physical router as a gateway. BGP speaker uses BGP to advertise the router which is not to connect in the same group. Neutron doesn't have a feature like BGP speaker yet. Realizing this cost and relativity high. For example, we need to develop BGP support, which we just should do, should do right away. <coughs> uh, CAPEX, Linux server for BGP speaker, and uh, special requirements, upstream physical data that support BGP. Uh, the amount of public IP consumption will be number of virtual data. It's same amount of current DVR model. Uh, however, we need more enhancement for BGP support to realize this idea. Because the uh, BGP speaker will be another single point of failure. I think possible, uh, I think possible solution is to make virtual router behave as BGP speaker. Then uh, I summarize these ideas. The ideas in the uh, order of the amount of public IP consumption. You can see that uh, ideas that uh, the ideas that many public IPs require is doesn't need to pay cost for infrastructure. I think distributed is not is trade off between public IP consumption and cost of infrastructure. Uh, future plan of distributed is not. Uh, at the design summit, I will prop, uh, propose idea number three. One is not for one compute node without a security concern again. Because it doesn't need, uh, it doesn't any specific hardware. And this idea haven't uh, any security concerns. As you know, uh, this idea still many public IPs can be consumed in a, a particular environment. If you cannot uh, get much advantage in your environment, you can choose the uh, centralized is not. Uh, sorry. Finally, let's discuss at the design summit. Uh, I will discuss at uh, Neutron's contributors meetup on Friday. Uh, from now, Chan will explain about distributed DHCP. Thank you. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Zhang, and I'm here presenting this topic on behalf of my colleague, uh, Mr. Han Zhang Shi. Okay, so uh, the topic is distributed DHCP agent. In fact, my partner has brief you uh, uh, has briefing to you an uh, overall picture of how we can remove the bottleneck and the single point of failure on the neutral network node, okay? So he has provided a big picture. And I just want to emphasize one point, one item in the big picture. It's a distributed DHCP. Okay, so three topics. The first one is that we should review the current status of DHCP agent or DHCP implementation in Neutron. And second, we will go through the proposed distributed DHCP agent feature. And the third is that we will have some roadmap, especially in Metaka version. Okay, so uh, this is a high-level architecture of current DLCP mechanism in current Neutron uh, architecture. Okay, so uh, as we all know that we have controller node, and on the controller node, we will deploy Neutron server. Okay, so Neutron server will collaborate with uh, DLCP agent deployed on the network node. Okay, so the DHCP agent will manage and uh, especially it will spawn and manage the DNS mask processes as DNS servers, which serves the DHCP request uh, sending out from the VMs 
in various uh, tenant virtual networks. Okay, or more specifically, uh, we can see that for each virtual network, we will spawn uh, at least one DNS mask precise as a, a DHCP server. Okay, and uh, in fact, here uh, although we, we we call it DHCP, it is in fact some static. Uh, IP address assignment mechanism. Okay, in most cases, we just use DNS mask as a reference implementation. So here is a DHCP service workflow. Okay, so to use the DHCP service provided by Neutron, uh, in general, we can consider the workflow into five steps. The first one is uh, we should at first we should create a network for a tenant, and then. On the network, we should create subnetwork, and then we should enable the DHCP service. Okay, so those three steps is in general for a network and for a subnetwork. Okay, and then for a VM level uh, operation, we should at first create a pod. Okay, so for pod, we consider it as a virtual NIC or something like that, and after that, we use this uh, pod to create a VM. And after the VM is created, it's provisioned. Uh, so during the booting process of the guest operating system, the operating system itself will send out a DHCP request. And this DHCP request will be served by the DNS mask process dedicated to this virtual network and respond it, uh, uh, assign a fixed IP address. So this is a whole working, uh, working flow, okay. Now let's talk about HA or high availability. As we all know that in a production level environment of OpenStack, so HA is always critical. Okay, so how to achieve HA in the DHCP services? So at least we should provide two or more uh, network node the, the deployment instances. So for each of the network node, we should deploy one DHCP agent, and this DHCP agent will be, uh, will be used to manage the uh, DHCP services on this network node. Uh, and all of the DHCP agents and the DNS mask processes working in active-active mode to provide a back, uh, backup capability. So if one DHCP agent fail or one DNS mask service fail, so the other ones can take it over to provide the service continuously, okay? So it can guarantee that so the, the service itself is in HA mode. Now, we come to this page. So uh, although we have fundamental DHCP service capability, we have HA capability, but we also have some problems to handle. The first is that uh, the IP address, uh, the IP address is consumed, okay? So for each subnetwork, so each DNS mask process, precise will consume one IP address, okay? So if we ask for HA, then at least the two or more fixed, uh, fixed IP addresses will be consumed, okay? So this is a kind of cost. And second, so uh, as we know that for each network node, the host level resources, either the CPU and memory and bandwidth and so on, are very critical, in fact. So uh, because you know that uh, we need the network node to transfer to forward the network traffic. But if we just consolidate all of the DHCP services, the DHCP DNS mask processes on the network node, the, DNS, uh, the DHCP service itself will also consume uh, resources. For example, we need to uh, create, uh, we need to uh, occupy some CPU, occupy some memory, and so on. Okay. So uh, we can just uh, we can just assume as, uh, such a scenario. Okay, so in a typical OpenStack deployment, it's very easy that we have hundreds or even thousands of virtual networks. Okay, so in such a case, the resource for management consumed on the network node itself is not ig uh, ignorable. Okay, so it's a problem. And the fourth item here is that in some cases. Okay, just in some cases, uh, there is a risk that a VM cannot get its fixed uh, uh, IP address. The reason is that, so when the Neutron server just uh, send the uh, IP address assignment information out to the uh, DHCP agent, 
So the DHCP agent will uh, reboot will reboot the DNS mask process to make the IP address configuration uh, information work. Okay, so there is a process of rebooting a DNS mask. Such kind of rebooting will interrupt the DNS mask, uh, uh, the DNS mask or D, uh, the uh, DHCP service for maybe a short time, maybe just a short time, but if it's for unfortunate that just during this short time, some VM send out a uh, DHCP request and the request is received by the network node, then in such a short time, it cannot be served and the VM cannot get a uh, fixed IP address, okay. So this is some problem in a large deployment of OpenStack. Okay, so uh, how to address that? I think we can get some hints, we can get some reference implementation of NOAA network, okay, because in NOAA network, we just have a multi-host DHCP uh, implementation, okay, it can be a reference. So uh, this feature just uh, summarize the uh, DHCP, uh, distributed DHCP agent idea, okay. Uh, we can see that in such kind of new implementation, we just deploy a DHCP agent on each of the compute node, okay. Each of the compute node will have its own DHCP agent. And this DHCP agent is only used to manage the DNS mask processes on this uh, compute node for the VMs hosted by this compute node, okay. So there is a difference, okay. Uh, we can just imagine that in a typical uh, environment for production. So on each of the compute node, typically we only have tens of virtual machines, for example maybe 20 or 30, okay. And so it means that at most on each compute node we only need to host maybe 20 or 30 virtual networks. So we only need to create such kind of a number of namespaces for manage virtual network. Okay, so that is not very, very challenging, okay. It, it's more easy to be implemented than the consolidated network node, okay. And also, we can see that in such kind of um, uh, implementation, so all of the DNS mask processes uh, serving one virtual network on different compute node will share one IP address, okay. So whatever uh, compute node number is, we only has only one fixed IP address for the DHCP service. So this is also a kind of resource saving, okay. Okay, so uh, this page just shows the advantages of DHCP, uh, a distributed DHCP compared to the consolidated traditional DHCP implementation, okay. Uh, okay, so in general, we think that uh, it can save resources, it can uh, remove or it can reduce management traffic workflow uh, between the, net, uh, the uh, controller node, between the neutron server uh, and the DHCP agents because for each one DHCP agent, it only needs to receive the management information, the MAC to IP mapping relationship information for this specific compute node, okay. There is no too much VMs on this one node. So there is no too much management information for this node to be transferred, okay. It can help to reduce the management traffic for this node, okay. And of course, uh, since now one DHCP agent only manage DHCP services for this uh, located uh, compute node. So the scope of failure has been uh, limited, okay. So there is no single point of failure problem. Uh, for roadmap side, uh, uh, we have submitted this back to the uh, Neutron community and we plan to promote it in the community and get it merged in M1 cycle. Uh, the code and the first reference implementation will be based on the OVS agent and we will manage the DNS mask uh, uh, precise to provide the DNS server. Uh, and also we will, uh, we have the plan to support the internal DNS. And uh, after the first three items, we will have some other future plan to support uh, the other plugins or ML2 drivers. 
Okay, so uh, this is just uh, the work Huawei is trying to push to the neutron community. Okay, thank you.